Greg Mel, CEO of Electra Battery Materials. Electra is a critical minerals company in North America, and our primary focus right now is building the continent's first battery grade cobalt refinery uh, in Canada, just north of Toronto. Up and running. There's there's life in the old dog yet. Um, you've heard, you know, it's been a sort of t- a difficult two or three years, but um, uh, a lot happened this year. What do I need to know? A lot has happened. Yeah, look, I mean, the, the backdrop's been tough, right? Uh, we, we've had to rebrand a little bit from ESG and carbon reduction to critical minerals in China. Um, but as I tell my team and my investors, the, the journey is the same one, right? It's about onshoring a supply chain that we don't have. So processing, yes, uh, we've been, I'll be honest, kind of planning, treading water, funding, getting ready for two years now. And uh, some of our peers, unfortunately, have kind of died off in the meantime. But for us, um, we're finishing the year. Yeah, I think we talked uh, off camera. This is Electra 2.0. We converted 40 out of 67 million U.S. of debt. Uh, we raised uh, in the aggregate 82 and a half million of new capital. That's government, three levels of government, including the DOD and, and private capital. And so now we are sort of midway through a ramp up and a readiness plan that's going to see, you know, lots of people on our site to get the last leg of construction done so that we can start producing in 2027. Right. But just like, OK, 2.0. Good. Um, you know, the, the markets have changed. The, the, the buzzwords have changed. You know, um, you know, it's no longer about green critical minerals. It's, it's about, uh, it's like, yeah, it's not about green minerals, but it's, it's critical minerals. These are the, the phrase. What, what are you building for? What's the, what's the, what's the problem? What's, what, what's the market you're filling? Yeah, there, there's a lot of noise around EV adoption rates. And yes, they're slower. And yes, they're slower still in North America, but it's not dropping. And so our, our needs are both industrial and electric vehicle. And it's 100% of the market. Um, today, even in-country fabrication would consume 100% of the 6,500 tons of cobalt we're going to be making. Um, and, and that includes, it's not just EVs, but EVs, it's military drones and night vision goggles and all of those other applications. If we're looking specifically at anything that has a battery, uh, we remain pertinent. Yes, LFP is picking up. Not a threat to us because there is zero presence in this market. And we've got our demand, at least on our on our book, uh, indicative interest has got a twice our production rate. We're not even producing it. Okay, well, okay, and, and talk me through some of the numbers. And, and so I know, I know you're um, the, the cap price is relatively low, but it, it kind of you were slightly paralyzed, but not able to kind of get that money for for a long time. So um, talk me through the numbers. Talk me through what the hope is in terms of market uh, capture. Sure, sure. Look, the asset. I'll, I'll, I'll stick to USD. It's, it's about a two hundred and fifty million plus asset once it's done. So right Brownfield's facility that we acquired, it is a previously operating hydrometallurgical refinery, different product, different market, nickel and cobalt. And so the kind of 2x expansion and the, uh, you know, the focus now on cobalt sulfate um, has about 60 million US was our last estimate 2023. So we're today we're carrying that with inflation at about a 69 million capex built against an 82 and a half raise. And we're doing that now. So we, we, we've got our EPCM contractor. We've got our project team that's growing. And we had like we had nine general contracting firms visit the site two weeks ago. So once we get those tenders in December 12th, we'll work through Christmas getting the costing done. We'll have a budget and a schedule for the market uh, in January. But I think safe to say 2026 is really the build year. Build, end of the year, you start looking at, at a, you know cold commissioning. And then 2027, we start our production under a toll, you know, kind of the base model is a toll type arrangement so that you're locking in a margin. Right. So, you, and there's, okay, so that, that's the kind of build component. And I'm sure you'll let us know next year when, when all that kind of kicks off, um, how, how you're getting on. In terms of the economics, right, coming back to this, because like come back to this kind of market basic stuff, you need the feed and then you need offtake. You need to be able to sell into markets. Can you just talk about those, those the two ends of the of, yeah. of that? Yeah, yeah. We're a, we're a processor. We're not vertically integrated at this point. We have we yeah. have assets in Idaho, but that's not a that's not a today story. So our relationship, yeah. Western producers, the two biggest ERG and Glencore. Uh, so it's the Congolese operations, the same ones that China and and Coca-Cola to Finland relies upon. So it's a diverting fee that's currently going to China, bringing it to North America. And then on the offtake side, you know, the key sort of our cornerstone offtake relationship that we've announced into the market is a five-year contract with LG. And that'll be, you know, 60%, maybe up to 80% of our production at our election. Okay, okay 60 to 80%. And so that's going to be always sort of like fixed costs. I mean, how's that, what's that agreement look like? We're trying at least, 
I mean, the market's gotten a lot better, right? Sulfate's up two and a half times from its low as sort of 10 bucks. So, uh, but there's a lot of weird stuff that goes into a you know, small, less liquid market like that. And then the pricing is a little opaque. Um, so even though I, I like parts of what I see today, the idea is to try to you know, just cover your fixed costs. Don't get greedy. Don't swing for the fences. Lock in a margin. Maybe that last 20%, 25%, maybe you play the market a little bit. But I think year one, as we start to ramp up, let's just not let's just not mess it up and not get greedy. And so basically, it's a, it's a total arrangement with LG. It's a fixed margin we're going to make for every pound of cobalt that we produce. And that way, we've got comfort. And they've got a little downside protection. So we've got the downside protection. They've got the upside protection so that if it does become irrationally exuberant, then yeah, we'll we'll have our wings clipped a little bit, but they also won't be uh, won't be too uh, too punished. Or and taken. What was, what's the process you went through with with the offtake in terms of them sort of t- testing product and you know, meeting their specifications? So is that all done now? It's yeah. Well, no, I think truthfully it's not all done, but it's not like a lithium product where you've got to produce for twelve months to get qualified in the supply chain. Uh, the quantities of cobalt in a cathode are so small that there are blending opportunities. So we've produced it in a lab we produced it on a pilot we've repeated it on a pilot basis we've seen you know their specs they've seen our product has it been used in their batteries not yet um the quantities on ramp up are relatively small and we've got a couple of off ramps there are some chemical producers and a few other outlets that would buy it so so for instance day one you turn the machine on you're you're not quite on spec there are alternate markets you can sell to or frankly you just cycle it back through your circuit and you and you produce that so you know, if people ask me what the big risk is, it's like, how quickly do we hit a, a commercial spec that's acceptable to LG? That, that's the thing to watch. But there's a lot of contingencies that go into that as well in terms of how we can manage and how they will manage it as well. They're the biggest ch- non-Chinese buyer of cobalt. They want to get it into their supply chain and they can blend it with various products throughout the world. Okay, so, so given what I've heard at the moment, so I've got to ask about, okay, like pay, payback period um, and also, you know, kind of build up of cash. Um, you know, how long, how long do you, does it take for you to kind of get self-sufficient? I, I think it's, it's a phrase yeah, looking yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, not fair. It's about a, uh, the, at the run rate that we're targeting, so 6,500 tons of cobalt, uh, it's 30 million of EBITDA uh, per annum is, is, the, is the target. Now you're looking at about a one-year ramp up. So when we start, it's a, it's a two-phase process. Initially, when we conceived of this, it was going to be a 5,000-ton plant. We looked at it, we thought, geez, that bottleneck is that crystallizer circuit. Let's get a bigger one. So 65 is where we're going. So we're we're already, we're already permanent to 5,000. We'll get the permits to 6,500. But assume 12 months to go from sort of zero to 6,500. And it's at that point that you hit that 30 million run rate. So year one, you're, we're looking, if I recall, maybe it's 15, 18 million of EBITDA, which, which will be fine. Well, you know, you're not going to make a lot of money, but we'll at least cover our bills and then some. Um, but the first, you know, it, it, the, the S curve on a on a hydromet plant, typically the first two or three months are hard, right? Getting all the gremlins out. And once you get the plant running, you, you ramp it up pretty high to 80, 85 percent, 90 percent. And then you're struggling to get that last little bit of juice out. I guess gold mills are not dissimilar as well, right? You get to kind of 91, 92. You're trying to get up to 95. Um, so it's, it's that it's that kind of idea of the early and the late stages, just being focused on the production. And so for that, we've got you know, Metso and Hatch and a few other contractors that will be working hand in hand with us. But, but, but I, I kind of want to, what I want to, so having seen this of the market that you kind of gone through and, and the, as you say, this opaque sector, which is, which is co- cobalt, um, and without sort of wanting to kind of quote Warren Buffett at you, you kind of, you know, EBITDA is one thing, cash is another, right? So you, I want you to kind of get to that. I want to understand at what point you get to the safety of being able to build up a reasonable cash reserve one's going to protect itself from the vagaries of the market but two also you do that kind of growth thing that companies got to talk about yeah, yeah looking at that'll be part of the january sort of projections as we we're rebasing everything right the capex the operating costs our, our reagent costs we're we're going to go so the biggest uh the biggest inputs that are going to drive our margin is going to be acid and caustic and those two we've got look we've got contractual mechanisms that will protect us a little bit again with our with our optic parties um but the market's changed a lot in two years and so we're running that now. I think safe to say we'll need a working capital cushion for six months, um, and then you start to get out from under it. But our, look, our lenders have been great, right? They converted like sixty percent of their debt uh, into equity, and uh, and they're there for the long haul. So we feel, uh, you know, working capital. There will be probably something put in place. Well, there will be before the end of next year. We'll we'll bring in a facility just to 
make sure we got that buffer, whether it's with our existing lenders or others, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so I think name of the game, get, get this thing executed, get it built, and um, get into kind of um, re re revenue flowing situation um, and how you scale that. Yes, I, I, I wait to hear from you. The, the rest of the portfolio has some value, but it's, it's non-core in terms of activity or a, a capital allocation at the moment. Um, would you consider kind of spinning out things like the Idaho Cobalt Asset or? Yeah, look, if I, if I look at the investments that the U.S. government has made, right, into MP and Trilogy and all those others, um, Cobalt's a hard one. And, and I look at, if I look at the Idaho Cobalt Belt, there's basically, you know, us and maybe three other assets. Um, so if I have my policy hat on, like just slam them all together, right? And whether it's somebody else or Electra or a, a Spinco. So, yeah, I mean, I think uh, you got to be. You got to be you got to be versatile. Um, we don't need to do everything. Being vertically integrated would be nice, but it's not the only outcome. If they wanted to, or anything, you know, you spin all those up into an asset, and we buy all the offtake. Great, right? No mighty risk, and we get a domestic feedstock. So there's a lot of ways to spin it. Uh, we do have a retired U.S. admiral on our board, um, and there's a reason for that, right? I think we've got our sights on the U.S. not just with regards to Idaho, but future investments, future growth opportunities, and, and look, even even defense procurement, right? We've heard about stockpiling and, and cobalt stockpile, and we could be part of that solution. So there's about three ways we could approach engagement that maybe we are approaching engagement with the U.S. government. Uh, but, 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 as I tell my board and my team, let's focus on execution, right? A couple of us can look over here at the pipeline. We got to get this first one built. So give me four or five, six months, keep the train on the tracks, and then we'll we'll gain a license to do a little bit more. Okay, because I think, you know, when we first talked a few, a few years ago, there's kind of a big vision in an in a, in a enthusiastic market, admittedly, about, you know, what this could be the beginning of for Canada. You know, we talked about recycling, and you have the nickel, you have the cobalt, you've obviously got the, with the cobalt um, here as well. But is is that vision still there? Is that still part of the, what the future holds for this company? I think it, it kind of it has to be right. If we only did this, if we only built this refinery, it's good. It'd be a good little private company. Um, still too small. And I say that to everybody. It's not just Electra. It's all of us single asset companies. We've all got to be merged, or we got to grow organically, or, or be sold. And I'm not, you know, this is not a retirement plan for me. It's a, it's a it's a it's a vision that I have. So there are some things we can do. I think I think the recycling process that we've developed in relationships are real. Um, I think Idaho has potential, but it's going to take a lot more time and money. I think there's there's a need for a nickel refinery in America. There's lots of things you can do, but I'm an M and A guy by background, and these things, you know, you kiss a lot of frogs, and you can't spend a lot. It can't be your core activity. I guess I'll, I'll put it at that. And 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 all these things are going to happen back burner until they're not. I just got to stay focused on the cobalt plant. I agree with that. I agree with that. And, and you know, it, it is effectively like what a lot of um, gold companies are doing. They're, they're looking to how do I get into revenue quickly, be, become a little less dilutory story, um, and then we'll build from there. And that's um, that's, that's good to hear. Look, Trent, I am like, appreciate it. I just want to sort of dive in and sort of see before Christmas, um, see what you're up to, because I couldn't help but notice some of the press releases uh, look like you've started to go again. So um, have a great Christmas. We'll speak to you in the new year. Thank you very much, man.